Hello and welcome to this project. I'm not exactly certain what I'm doing right now, so please bear with me. I originally intended this project to be something that I was going to do for a couple of friends and my wife in order for them to see what it is that I was talking about. But I decided instead that it was probably better to go and make this and put it up on YouTube because if it's interesting to me, it might be interesting to someone else. What you're seeing on the screen is an emulation of an old computer system, a microcomputer originally released in 1977 that went by the name of the Tandy TRS-80 Model 1. TRS stood for Tandy Radio Shack. This particular program that I'm going to be running in it <coughs> was distributed on cassettes in 1981 for people to play. It was later um, redone in 1982 and released on cassettes for another line of their computers, the TRS-80 Color Computer. I talk to a lot of people throughout time and try to explain to them what it was like to have a program distributed on a cassette. The program here is called Raka 2, and it was originally released for $15, and it is 15K of size. That is much smaller than almost any uh, image you will find anywhere online today. Now, in order to access these programs, the different computers use different uh, methods. The Model 1, uh, the program was written in a machine language. So, if you wanted to run the cassette, you first had... to activate the system. And then... Now, if you notice in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, there are asterisks that are blinking. That tells you that the cassette is actually loading. During this time, I'm going to take a moment and tell you about the introduction to give you an idea of what the game is. It reads, <coughs> You never thought that your PhD project would send you to a remote corner of the world, but the research grant came through. You and your team of anthropologists began in India, sailing up the river Grana, where it departs from the Ganges. Last night you entered the Nepal on the river, but were forced to come around when navigation was made impossible by the twisting narrow stream. For years now, there have been rumors of a civilization still existing somewhere on the fringe of the Himalayas. Living as people who lived thousands of years ago, several expeditions have searched the tribe of Khazad-Dim without success. Reports have filtered back of terrible tragedies, members of expeditions who disappeared without a trace, others who were found later either dead or unable to recount what they had suffered at the hands of what. This morning looks like a good one to start exploring the area. After breakfast, you planning to set out on foot, perhaps to talk to a few natives for any information they might give you and hire a guide. As you sip your coffee and scan the map of the region, one of your crew approaches, holding the, by the arm a wrinkled old native dressed in long robes and wearing a headdress. <coughs> beware, beware of the Temple of Raka too, the old woman cries. Do not go into the jungle. You will never get out. We found her snuffing around outside the camp. She keeps yelling something about temples and gods, and beware, beware, your photographer says. She won't talk to anyone but you. She says she has to talk to the leader. The old woman is seated beside you, where she unfolds an unbelievable story about the god Rakatu and his temple of sacrifice. The woman tells of a treasure kept in the temple, the hideous monsters of Rakatu employs, and the Khazad-dim who serve Rakatu and guard his temple. Though the woman will not consent to be your guide, she points a bony finger to the west, pleading with you one more time to turn back. Seeing that her efforts are useless, she rises, tracing a sign on your forehead for luck, and disappears into the undergrowth surrounding your camp. At last, you have the key to finding the Khazad-dim tribe, and much more. 
You don't want to alarm the group with the story the woman had told you, yet you are anxious to begin the search. Extinguishing the fire with your coffee, you set out alone in the direction the woman pointed, <coughs> and are soon surrounded by the impenetrable jungle. It's up to you now. Good luck, and may the gods of the jungle smile upon you and grant you a safe journey. <coughs> that was the opening blurb of the manual that's there to set the tone. Back in many days past, it was very common for the games to have their entire backstory written in the manual and just go right into the adventure itself. <coughs> now, I need to tell you that this game is um, different than a lot of things that people nowadays are used to. It does not have um, fancy graphics or anything like that. It's actually what we call a text adventure. Uh, sort of the predecessor to the visual novels, which anyone who knows me knows I am obsessed with. And it uses a text input generator. Um, I don't think generator is the proper word for it, but that's what I'm going to call it right now. You input text commands, and it has a parser that uh, looks at those commands and decides what to do based on them. And the limit of the words that you can input um, is determined by the level of the parser, and most of the commands in this game are two words. There's a few times where it uses three words, or um, <coughs> or uh, two words, uh, one word, and well, for um, oh look, it finished. I was going to say for the purpose of inputting your directional commands, whether you're going north, going south, going east, or going west, you can enter the commands go north, go south, go east, go west, or you could just type in a N, S, E, or W. Anyway, after the game has been loaded into memory, the next step is to tell it to execute. And that is the beginning of the game. I should note that if I intend to do any more of these, I do not know yet. I'm going to probably edit past the loading unless I have a blurb to read or a bit of history to tell you about it. Now this was not the original game that I intended to do this with. This project started about two weeks ago when I was lamenting that I never finished a different game made for this system called Xenos. But making Xenos run and getting through it seemed to be a much more complicated task. So I decided instead I was going to pull out a game that I'm much more familiar with in order to make through the first run. Now, when I say much more familiar with, I mean that I've played this game many, many times throughout history, <coughs> and I know most of the tricks of the system. So I'm probably going to not trigger most of the traps, which I hope is okay. I will probably do another run at a later point using the color computer and trigger the traps and edit the uh, video in order to show them how it works. Anyway, the first uh, obstacle you have to overcome here is the jungle. As it says, you're in a de dense, dark, damp jungle. And this jungle, if you go north or south or east, you can go forever and never reach anything. But if you move to the west two times, you're going to be at the temple. So let us go ahead and move to the west. <coughs> you are in a dark, dense, damp jungle. You hear the distant cries of wild animals. West. Through the jungle you see the east wall of a great temple. A group of guards marches around the corner to your right. Now if I were to go west again right now, I would get filled up with a bunch of crossbow bolts, which I do not want. These guards are going to take one turn to go around each wall. So I am going to wait. Pause. A group of guards disappears around the corner to your left. 
So I'm going to go west again. You're at the east wall. You hear the distant cries of wild animals. Now I'm going to go south. You're at the south wall. You hear the distant cries of wild animals. I'm going to go west. You are standing before the west entrance of the temple. Great bronze gates engraved with images of serpents stand silently before you. There is a coin on the ground. You hear the distant cries of wild animals. This coin is very important. <coughs> Without it, you will die later. Coin taken. You hear the distant cries of wild animals. Now, I'm going to head north. You are at the north wall. <coughs> A large network of vines clings to the wall. You hear the distant cries of wild animals. At this point, I'm going to try and climb the vine. This may or may not work. Ah, oh, good. On the first try. Normally, if you fail, you have to quickly retreat to the south and wait for the guards to pass by again, or else they will kill you. You climb to the roof. As you step on the roof, it collapses. You're in a small room with granite walls and a floor. There is a small opening to the east and a large hole in the ceiling. There is a small bottle sitting on the floor. I would like to call your attention for a moment to the small bottle sitting on the floor. Though it is unimportant, it is there, and it is something that I can get. This ga game had the port of it for the Coco, which was the nickname for the color computer. Um, this bottle was edited out. We have the small bottle. Oh! There is something written on the coin. So let's read the coin. Praised be Raka too. There is only one direction I can go. So let us go east. You're in a large rectangular room. On the floor of the east side of the room is an intricate oriental rug stretching between the north and south walls. In the east wall is a huge carved wooden door. To the south, a small hole leads to a dark passageway. Now, the first thing I want to show you going to examine things in here. Now, you cannot get the rug. It's a big rug. <coughs> Under the rug you discover a deep, dark pit which extends from the north to the south wall. The pit is too broad to jump. You do not want to fall into that pit. <coughs> so now, let us look at the room again. Oh, before we do. I misspelled examine. There is nothing special about the room. <coughs> As you notice, As it said, I'm in a large room, and there is a small hole leading to the south. So I want to go south. I'm in a dark passageway which slopes up, up and to the south. There is a reason I am examining the room each time. Oh. You may notice I typed only examin, E-X-A-M-I-N. That is because the parser does not require more letters than that. <coughs> we will go south again. You're at the top of a passage which slopes down into the north. There is a corridor to the east and another to the west. There is food here. Now, I have no idea why someone would take the food and eat the food. But 
I've always felt that it was a good thing to do. We are going to go west. You're in a small room with a single exit. There is a large sword laying nearby. Let's get that sword, because I know we're going to need it later on. From there, we're going to examine the room. And there is nothing special about the room. We're going to go east, back to the room we were in just a moment ago. You are at the top of a passage which slopes down and to the north. There is a corridor to the east and another to the west. We're going to continue going to the east. There is a T-shaped room with exits to the south and the west. Let's examine the room. There is nothing special about the room. I want to go south. You are in a room with gray stone walls. Passages lead to the north and the east. You discover a precious gem hidden in a crevice. Let's get that gem. I can stop examining rooms now. <coughs> I went south to get here, and I can go either north or east. I'm going to go north. There is a T-shaped room with exits to the east, south, and west. Let's go to the east. You are in a triangular room with openings in the east and west corners. There is a statue in the south corner with a bow and arrow. The statue is facing the east door. There is a tiny slot cut in the north wall. There is a message carved under the slot. So let's read the message. <coughs> the message says, safe passage for a price. Do you remember that coin we got earlier? Let's put the coin in the slot. The statue turns to face the west door. Now here's a hint. Do not go west. If you go west, you will die. Just putting that out there. So we're going to go east. You're at the south end of a great central hallway. Exits east and west walls. Let's go north. You're at the north end of a great central hallway. Exits in the east and west walls. There is a door on the north wall. The door is closed. So let's open. Ah, do not say, I need to say the door. Open door. Reek. The door is open. <coughs> let's go north. Because we are going through the door. Uh, you may be wondering by now, Am I doing this by memory, or do I have a map? I actually have the map for this place, mostly in my memory. Um, I did take some time to do a little bit of running around in the game over the last couple of days to make sure that I remembered things. Um, if I do more of these in the future, it will probably not be this easy. You are in a vault <coughs> with a large door to the south. A bejeweled lever is on one wall. There is a plaque on the wall above the lever. The door closes behind you. So let's read the plaque. Untold riches lie within reach, here to any knowing living creature. Be wary, though, no matter what thy creed, that thou harness and limit thy powerful greed. Pull the lever to gain thy wealth. Be prepared to... Do not pull this lever. Instead, let's get the lever. Bejeweled lever taken. Now let's open the door again. Different sound. 
Scroll. The door opens. So we're going to head south again. Here at the north end of a great central hallway, exits exist in the east and west walls. There is a door on the north wall. The door closes again. <coughs> Let's go east. You're in a very small room. There is a burning lamp here. Burning lamp taken. Do not extinguish this lamp. Also, do not rub it. Let's head west again. You are in the north end of a great central hallway. You probably remember this place, so we will go west again. You're at the entrance to a long, dark tunnel which leads west. There is a passage east. A candle is in the room. There are cryptic runes above the tunnel. Let's get the candle. Are you seeing a pattern here? We have a lamp that is burning and we have a candle. Now, you might think we should light the candle, but I already know the problem with the candle and you'll find out later exactly why. So let's head east again back into the great central hallway, and we'll head south in the central hallway. So we are now at the south end of the great central hallway, with exits existing in the east and west walls. We need to go east. This is a T-shaped room with exits east, south, and west. So let us go East again. Sorry. There we go. East. You are in a petite chamber. There is a larger room to the north and a passage to the west. So let's go north. You are in a large room which smells of decaying flesh. There are exits to the north and south. There is a hideous stone gargoyle perched on the ledge above the north passage. It may be a stone gargoyle, but this guy will kill you. So let us light the candle with the lamp. The candle is now burning. A sweet scent permeates the room. The light from the candle seems to be growing dimmer. Let's go north. And I am dead. The gargoyle comes to life and jumps down to block your way. The light from the candle seems to be growing dimmer. The gargoyle claws at you across the chest. You pass out. When you awaken, you find yourself chained to a blood-stained altar. A priest is kneeling over you with a knife. It looks like this is it. You are dead. Try again. You are in a dense, dark, damp jungle. I have to say that is actually quite embarrassing after... I just got done talking about how I have most of this in my memory. Maybe it would have been great for me to actually keep the the map out and open. Anyway, I'm going to do a quick cut here, so forgive me if this seems a little jarring. Okay, we're back. Let's try this again. I'm going to try a different approach with this. I'm going to drop the candle first. And then I'm going to light it. The candle is now burning. A sweet scent permeates the room. The light from the candle seems to be growing dimmer. Now, let's try going to the north. The gargoyle comes to life and jumps down to block your way. The light from the candle seems to be growing dimmer. As I recall, at this point, I want to go south. You're in a petite chamber. There is a larger room to the north and a passage to the west. 
Now, as you're probably wondering, there's something going on with the candle. The candle is actually poisonous. So I want to give it enough time to kill the gargoyle. And I do that by waiting. That should be enough time. <coughs> and let's go north again. Here in a large room which smells of decaying flesh. There are exits to the north and south. A candle is burning dimly. There is a dead carcass of an ugly gargoyle nearby. The light from the candle seems to be growing dim dimmer. So let's extinguish the candle. Get the candle. <coughs> and as you recall, there are exits to the north and the south. We came in from the south, so we're going to go north again. This is a tall room carved of stone with a single exit to the south. There is a golden chopstick here. Let's get the golden chopstick. And then go south again. South. Remember the petite chamber with the larger room to the north and a passage to the west? We will go west. And we're back in the T-shaped room. And we want to go south. You're in a room with gray stone walls. Passages lead to the north and the east. To keep going the direction we are going, we want to go east. You're in a round room with high walls. The only opening is to the west. A ring of the finest gold is here. What I am going to do here is I am going to... And hopefully this will illustrate the point. Golden ring is taken. Now let's examine the ring. There's something written on the gold ring. So let's read the ring. The inscription reads, Ring of Motion. This should be some kind of hint. We're in a round room with high walls. The only opening is to the north, I mean the west. Only opening is to the west. What is missing? Exactly. I dropped a candle, but there is no candle here. So let's drop the ring. And look again. There's a candle in the room. <coughs> There's a reason it's called a ring of motion. This ring, every time you pick it up, transports you to a different room. And if you were not to notice that, you would pick it up the first time, and you're back on the other side of the statue that you paid the coin to get past, and you will not have the coin, and it's turned facing you as you enter the room. So you will enter the room, thump, and dead, and have to start over. And it's not any fun, really, having to start over. Anyway, uh, let's pause here for a moment. Have to stay hydrated, that kind of thing. Okay, so let us get the candle, and let's check our inventory. By the way, you could also use the just the command invent. You are carrying the following. A small bottle, gold ring, large sword, bejeweled lever, candle, burning lamp, golden chopstick, precious gem. I have four of the five needed treasures. The gold ring, the bejeweled lever, the golden chopstick, and the precious gem. If I remember correctly, the other thing I need is the golden idol. So now we are going to go west, in a room with gray stone walls, and passages lead to the north and the east. North. 
a T-shaped room with exits east, south, and west. West. The south end of a great central hallway. Exits exist in the east and west walls. North. At the north end of a great central hallway, exits exist in the east and west walls. There is a door on the north wall. The door is closed. Let's go west. You're in the entrance to a long, dark tunnel which leads west. There is a passage east. There are cryptic runes above the tunnel. Read the runes. Into the tunnel enters the seeker. Bravely and wisely he goes, for he will recognize the reaper as the light before him glows. <coughs> We're going to continue going west. You're in a dark tunnel. Go west again. You're at the entrance to a long dark tunnel which leads east. There is a passage west. Let's go west again. You're in a large room with a single east exit. Before you stands an altar, stained with the blood of countless sacrifices. A golden idol stands in the center of the room. A large serpent lies coiled on the floor. The serpent gathers itself to attack. This is really a great room, as you probably know. We've already been in this room. Uh, this was when I embarrassingly died earlier the room that I ended up in. Now, you remember in the inventory a little while ago, uh, I had a sword? So let's try this. And hope this works. Kill serpent with sword. The serpent's head is severed from his body. A magnificent blow. The serpent is dead. I'm actually pretty surprised that that happened on the first try. So, uh, let's look at the room again. Single exit east, an altar. It's stained with bloods of sacrifices, a golden idol in the center of the room, and a large dead serpent lies on the floor. There's nothing special about the dead serpent. Nothing special about the altar. Let's get the idol. There is nothing special about the golden idol. Now, I remember this part being something that took me a while to figure out. We're going to push the altar. Ugh. With great difficulty, you manage to move the altar and discover a secret passage. Okay, let's climb down the passage. You're in a secret passage which leads east. The altar moves back to seal the hole above you. So let's go east. Here at the end of a passage, there is a hole in the ceiling. Let's climb up the hole. You climb out of the hole. It seems to magically seal up behind you. You're at the south wall. You hear distant cries of wild animals. This is not a good place to be. It's not very safe. So, let's head south. In the clearing before you stands a great, the south wall of a great temple. Okay, there is no guards yet. A group of guards marches around the corner to your right. Now, if I am facing the south wall, I am facing north. If the guards come around to the right, then that means they are on my east. A group of guards disappears around the corner to your left. They just disappeared to the west. So I want to go east. Through the jungle you see the east wall of a great temple. You hear the distant cry of wild animals. 
go east again. You are in a dark, dense, damp jungle. That's actually very hard to say. Go east again. You're in the dark, dense, damp jungle. You hear the distant cries of wild animals. Let's check my score. Out of a possible 50, my score is 25. How did I not get 50? I do not know, but we will try that again on another game, hopefully, later. There we go. I had to return to the location I started. You are in a dense, dark, damp jungle. Uh, type score out of a possible 50. My score is 50. How could I forget that part? Anyway, that was Raka 2. I hope you enjoyed it. I know for the most part I certainly did. And I really think that I would like to run this on the Coco at least once and be able to edit through and show all of the deaths that I know of. Um, that's, again, a project for a future point. Anyway, thank you for watching. And any comments would be most welcome. Good, bad, or indifferent.